Hi, folks. You are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks on Mike Morales, fading in and out of your picture in Southern California. That gentleman joining me today is Bryce Taylor in Austin, Texas. Well, you know, I can't say that I've thrown Bryce just about everything, like the kitchen sink. <laughs> today, Bryce and I, apart from some of the RTDs that we're going to be doing sooner or later, um, I threw Bryce this particular coffee tequila. It's called Cafeto. And this is coming from Tromba. This is the Tromba line. It's a new addition to their extension of their line. It is a technically, I guess they're calling it a coffee liqueur. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Crafted with tequila. Crafted with tequila. Mm -hmm. So we know the quality of Tromba. Tromba is a quality tequila. If you haven't seen any of our reviews, go back and watch them. But the master distiller and now a partner in the brand is, of course, Marco Sedano, who is legendary. He is the, the chemical engineer and the master distiller, the original master distiller since 1974 of Don Julio. Before, before Don Julio passed and they sold the brand and all that. So he is a partner in Tromba. It's been there since the beginning. And, uh, well, you know, uh, was it uh, Patron had XO and everybody had it in their bar mm -hmm. and then they stopped making it, especially right before the pandemic or right during the pandemic, they just stopped making it. And everybody freaked out. Oh my God, we got to fill that, that, that void right and everybody came up with their own version of coffee liqueur even though some are some are really good i've had a, a couple that were just outstanding uh i've had some real dogs uh avion has always had one in fact it wasn't even a coffee it was an espresso liqueur so it was espresso tequila liqueur which is excellent i love it but this one it's a whole different animal and I'm gonna just pour it. We're just we just broke the seal off uh, right before we came on camera. We're gonna we're gonna pour it. Oh, oh. Bryce has done a deep dive into the process, so he's gonna tell us what goes into it. I'm gonna pour mine in this particular copita. Oh my God, look at that! And I've only had one cup of coffee since before we came on line here. So now, I used to work. I used to sell paper, food, and chemicals in New Mexico. I did that for probably five years. And the company I worked for, we sold, we had 5,000 line items or more. We sold everything from vacuums, paper, food, chemicals. I sold um, stuff like everything but boobs, okay? Uh, come to find out that the year before I came to work for the company, they had they also sold liquor, and they sold the liquor portion of the company to um, RNDC. I'm giving you a little bit more background than you need, but one of the guys that I worked with who was an expert, he was a coffee cupper, certified coffee expert. And so he would, we sold coffee. We had a great line of coffee. And he told me, he showed me what coffee, what actual coffee looks like. It's supposed to, when you brew it, and how, you know, how to grind it and all this. The guy was amazing. And I, my folks are from Central America. So I don't know about Bryce, but all I can say is any tequila guy, any tequila enthusiast or nerd who is who, who loves tequila is even more picky about the coffee he drinks. Okay, <laughs> so I don't know about Bryce because I know Bryce is APD. He's a, he's a cop. <laughs> You know, they'll walk into a 7 Eleven, and I've walked into 7 Eleven to get the bottom of the pot because it's yeah, yeah. I bring my own coffee, but yeah, there you go. Good man. Now, what coffee is supposed to look like is not 10W30. All right, that's supposed to look like synthetic oil. It's a post coffee is a cherry. If you've never been to a coffee plantation, go to one, find one you can go to in Central America, Costa Rica. It's got one that, that's just amazing, and it's supposed to turn. When you brew coffee, you're supposed to be able to see through it, and it turns back into a cherry color. It turns red. There are red highlights in it. And the my it's a long story, but this is what I'm getting in this thing when I poured it. It's got red highlights, Bryce. It looks like coffee. 
yeah. really well brewed coffee from a really nice region. And if and you're, I can see it when I twirl it and the kind of light gets through it, like a real dark cherry cola, like a right, amber. exactly like a cherry cola. Thank you. Yeah. See, that's why I love yeah. doing stuff with Bryce. He pulls out stuff that <laughs> I, I can't, you know, I forget, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so their, their process seems very interesting. So they're saying that they marry 100% agave tequila, tromba. So we're using, you know, their, their Blanco here. Right. Uh, and then with the rich flavor of fine roasted Mexican coffee beans using our proprietary cold brew tequila extraction process. So I think they're making they're making cold brew with tequila, not taking cold brew and adding tequila. So the, right, and cold brew, it, you know, it's it's water. I mean, that's you brew you brew your water through it and cold brew it, right? Yeah, but that wouldn't be proprietary. So I I, I think they're actually making cold brew, utilizing tequila instead of water. Yes, I believe Oops. I believe so. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. And this is what it smells like. Yeah. Too, it doesn't smell like a liqueur because I've had some really great tequila liqueurs. Eric and I did one, a whole line called um, Encantadora. And I still have a few swallows left. I am hoarding <laughs> that, that coffee liqueur because the brand, sadly, has disappeared off the face of the earth. Too bad because they had everything going for it except for funding, apparently. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it was it was the best coffee liqueur I ever had up until this point. So it's got a high bar for me. I don't know about you yeah. guys. This has got a high bar for me. Yeah. So thirty five percent alcohol by volume, uh, seven fifty milliliters. So yeah, it's a liqueur, and it looks like they are also adding agave nectar. So it's blended with agave nectar and specially selected Mexican grown botanicals. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. It it's okay. like fruity, yeah. but not really. I don't know if you're getting any fruit. Now see, Bryce is using like a you're you've got like a what a bourbon? Like a tulip, like a tulip a, glass. This one's the more like a copita, kind of yeah. like the rum or um yeah, this does fruit. have a little bit more of kind of that Glen Karen base, but Right, more of a more of a bell. This one, yeah. This one's actually branded by the LA Spirits competition. So this is their official glassware, which I'm not a big fan of. But it's what I had, and and I I wanted to use something that you would probably serve it in something you know fancy like this, right? Because it's fancy, it looks fancy. Even even Bryce's glasses, it's fancy. Yeah. But I'm getting like fruit notes. On yeah, this. So there's something I can't define. I mean, obviously you get that that cold brew kind of, you know. Yeah, the coffee, espresso. the coffee notes are at the top. Coffee but as you go down, yeah. as you break down the the glass, and if you're using a glass with a wider mouth surface, you can break it up in three or four sections. And and at the top, you get a lot of coffee off the top. But there's a there's this fruitiness. Yeah. And you know, again, I said coffee is a cherry. That's how it starts. It's a cherry. What you're roasting are the are the seeds, the nuts. That's what you roast. the The fruit is never uh, you know, yeah, the, only that, yeah. the only animal that eats that fruit are <laughs> uh, macaws. Wild macaws okay. will eat those fruits, and they will also eat the fruit from uh, from um, cashew trees because cashew is a nut, but cashew has a fruit surrounding it. So, like okay. wild macaws and parrots and you know, in, in tropical countries will eat the fruit and leave the seeds. Kind of like bats do with in the Philippines with their coffee, the bat guano. Bat guano coffee. I have yeah. yet to have that, but I want to. It, it is a fruit. Like I, the note, the fragrance I'm getting is a fruit. I just can't really figure out which one. But then yeah. again, depending on what Mexican botanicals, I'm not up on all of those so yeah I, I don't know what that means botanicals are usually herbs yeah but it could be anything i mean you know when you talk botanicals yeah. you talk gin you know i think they took a little bit from the from the gin segment and played around with it but it is it's a it's a it's a bright fruitiness though 
Yeah, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, what we're trying to say is it's not just coffee. It's not just another coffee liqueur to where you're no. like, okay, that's a, no. it smells like coffee and you know vodka, you know, alcohol. Yeah, right. So it's like Kahlua, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Or Tia Maria, which is a little softer than Kahlua. I want to dive in, dude. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm enamored by this fruitiness at the bottom. I want to know what that is. Yeah. So here we go. Oh my. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Man. I have never had coffee liqueur like this. This is good. Yeah. You know, because XO, if you've had XO, if you guys are in the business, if you're salespeople, you know you gave it well, you gave away Patron XO pieces of it. You gave it away as extras because nobody was going to buy that stuff. It it tastes like burnt bottom of the pot 7-Eleven coffee. That's what XO was. But it's great if you blend it in Mexican coffee. It's all right, right? You just yeah. you put it in a cocktail. This is not that. Yeah. And it's not, it's not avion espresso either. Because that's really one-sided as well. This has got all kinds of all kinds of depth to it. I, I didn't expect the complexity. Yeah, I mean, just when it even first hit my lips, it's really dense. You know, it's it's packed with flavors. There's layers. Um, there's sweetness. So it's not like an espresso to where, you know, it's just real, real bitter. You're getting a good sweetness, but there's still that coffee backbone. But there's this fruitiness that comes through. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's coming from the agave, um, the the agave uh, nectar. It might, but it doesn't come across like that. It comes across more fruity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's something behind it. I I can see the agave nectar being like the base, like what they delivered it. But yeah, that mm. whatever those botanicals are, really well balanced. Now Mexican coffee, again, like South America. I didn't know what the big deal was about Colombian coffee until I had my friend who, who flew, who he flew for the DEA. Did I ever tell you the story? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know, uh, uh, Bryce is APD. He's Austin PD. He's a he's a cop. So you know, I, I have a, I have a, a large um, affinity for guys in in law enforcement, and a good friend of mine uh, used to fly for the DEA. And he would come back with uh, what was allowed, you know, because they work for the government. They're allowed to bring you know, Cuban cigars. He would transport prisoners from here to there. I could probably tell you, but then he'd kill me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that kind of, you, those, those kind of guys. Yeah. But he was a pilot. And he uh, he came back from Colombia. He would come back from Colombia with a with a case of Colombian coffee, which would come in bricks. They would come in packages of bricks, and those are those are not canned. They come in in packages where they're vacuum sealed. I didn't know what the big deal was in Colombian coffee. I mean, I I, I you know you you get blends that, that are you hear about the, yeah. the mainstream, but when you've had real Colombian coffee, you understand why they blend it because it's so damn good. And so that's when I became more and more of a more into the, the coffee and regions where it came from. Now, Mexican coffee, the one that I've had primarily is come from from Chiapas, which is, I think, northern Mexico. And it's very, very earthy. So I'm but I haven't had enough Mexican coffee in, from enough regions to be able to pinpoint where this is coming from. But this is this doesn't come this is not coming across to me as earthy. No. It says Mexican um, Arabica beans. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Ara uh, Arabica? Or Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, it's right there on the front right of the label. Oh, it's on the label. Uh, yeah, on the front. Mexican grown. Oh, yeah, it's Arabica. Well, that Arabica, means, huh? you know, it's Arabica. That's the seed. But when gotcha. you talk about Arabica, it's the same. 
it's the same seed they use in Colombia. And what happens with the, that bean and the, the plant is it acquires the towar from gotcha. where it's grown. So Arabica from Chiapas is going to taste different than Arabica from, from Colombia. It's just going to because of the soil. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, or even Arabica, you know, from the Philippines, if anybody knows how to, I can get that guano <laughs> coffee, let me know. Um, yeah. But there's a really distinct fruitiness that's coming across. And it's like a stone fruit, like a plum, like a cherry. Uh, I was maybe, thinking like that. Maybe peach. Like, cherry, like that cherry cola, but like the syrup, like the concentrated yeah. syrup. But again, there are not, as all the ingredients are natural. So this is yeah. coming from Trumba, who just, we just did the, the Trumba Sedano, the, uh, the Reposado. That, that's, this guy's a mad genius. So I'd imagine he's just he's just screwing with our palate <laughs> and trying to blow our yeah. brains out. Mm. And I, as I said, I had a high bar for this liqueur. This one just jumped the bar. I, I I'm gonna go and just say brand of promise nominee. It is not. He has now made this expression more of a of a legitimate well let's say like cristalino it's a it's now it's a it's a cristalino is a trend coffee liqueurs have always been around but he just upped that bar this is so this is the complexity in this coffee liqueur is unlike anything i've ever had it's not one sided. No, that's no. a beautiful part. And you know what? Some coffee liqueurs are made to be blended or or mixed in with your coffee, right? Uh, like I know, I think there's a Guinness coffee liqueur. There's a I think uh, Starbucks makes a coffee liqueur. XO no longer made. I think uh, Casta Negra has one. Everybody came up with one as, as soon as they heard XO was going to be discontinued. So they all came up with something. And, but this, and I love Encantadora. I, I, like I say, I hoarded it. I still have it in my storage unit out here in the backyard, out, in the, out under my patio. Because I know if I, if, I, if, it, if I get near it, I'm going to drink it. Yeah. But I wouldn't mix this with your coffee. This is good as after dinner. You know, we were talking mm -hmm. about with Sedano, we would pair it with like a, a tiramisu. Yeah. This is even better. This would be like after your tiramisu, right? Yeah. Or or use this in your mouth, man. No, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it in my coffee. I, I wouldn't because it really has that coffee flavor. It tastes like coffee with some fruit in it. And I'm not sure why. Yeah, it would go well in a uh, uh, what the carajillo, mm. the, the you know that cocktail, espresso martini. Yeah, espresso I martini. Would up with a, it would probably be sweeter than the espresso martini that you're normally used to. Yeah, but, but just take it. your sweetener, take your sweetener out. Yeah, you know, I, I normally use a, a simple syrup or like a bar syrup um, yeah. in it, but just delete that because this has enough sweetness yeah this is well, yeah the agave the agave nectar that they're using yeah you know and then yeah it's natural natural sweetness nothing, right. nothing wrong with that but yeah no it, it's it's just you just putting the agave back into it to balance I, I think it's so well balanced and the fruitiness is coming out of it i i'm i'm enamored by the fruit i i don't know i keep harping on it does it tell us what yeah. What kind of fruit we're getting? I, I want to say stone fruit. No one now. Here, here are the notes. Yeah, let me see. Toasted coffee. I am showing on their on their website. They're saying thirty five bucks. That's a steal. So buy a case. Oh, oh God, all day long. Buy a case. Yeah. Let me see. It says tobacco leaves, mint, and pineapple. You know what? I buy the pineapple. Chocolate. I can see that. Cooked agave honey. There you go, Bryce. There's there's your agave. Yeah. 
I don't think it lime zest and orange zest. I don't get lime. I, I don't get but that. I could go, Do you get go that? Orange. Are you getting that? Because I'm not. To me, no, it's more. Not lime. It's more. It's more. Um, it's more stone fruit. It's more like peaches, plums. I yeah. would even go. I would even go as far as saying prunes because prunes are sweet. Yeah. Or even raisins. Yeah. Even raisins. Yeah. And you get a lot of these notes are very familiar to me because how many times have you and I had an extra añejo that's got like dried fruit in it, right? Yeah, I, a lot I of the, high, go cherry. the highlands, say cherry. Uh, the aged highland expressions to me have a lot of stone fruit in them. Yes. You know, and stone fruits are, people give me flack all the time for using that term. It's just, it's peaches, so plums, fruit. anything that has a pit. Anything that has anything a, a pit. You know, yeah. That's all it is. People are like, what are stone fruits? Stone like, you know, you just don't call them stone fruits. But well, you know, they, they it helps you but, not type 10, 10 words. Yeah. When you when you dumb down the uh the the descriptors for the uh for the for the consumer, you say you just mentioned the the the, the fruit, yeah. okay, plum, peach plum, yeah, know, dried plums. You, dried plums are prunes, folks. That's what they are. Okay. Yeah. Dried grapes are raisins. <laughs> That's what they yeah. are. No, don't golden don't raisins are different than yeah. black raisins, you know. You really got to no. make those distinctions because then you're really drilling down. And when, right. a, when a when a coffee liqueur or any any liquor, anything that you're you're trying to dissect has that many layers in it, it deserves to be defined a little better. Yeah. And it's a and it's a challenge. It really almost I, even a walnut, a walnut. See, I would I would say nuts too. I would go like yeah. toasted. But like toasted and roasted nuts, like peanuts are yeah. roasted. You know, we say yeah. toasted because that's kind of a light, it's a light roasting. But roasting is full on flame. A longer process, yeah. It's yeah, long. it's a longer process and it's a higher heat. I mean, right. cashews are poisonous, people. Oh, really? Yeah. You I know. didn't know that. Cashews are uh -huh. poisonous. They have to be roasted right. so that you can eat them. And then oh, wow. and you break the layer off the outside, and what you're eating is the inside of that seed, because it is a fruit to start with. And the only reason I know yeah. this is because I've been to tropical. You, you, I've traveled. I, I've been very fortunate. I've traveled. I got a passport. I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. when you go to tropical countries, you see these plants, and the, you know the, if you ha if you're on a tour and a guide says, "Yeah, that's a that's a cashew tree." I go, well, where the hell are the nuts? Well, because it's all full of fruit. <laughs> and it's covered in macaws. You know, yeah. wild macaws, military macaws, yeah. in red and blue. And they're eating the fruit. Because what's left is the pit. You take the pit, you roast it, because if you eat the pit raw, it's going to kill you, because it's got cyanide in it. Right? And then what's left is the nut. And that's why we pay so much money for cashews, folks. Yeah, a lot of process. See, it's a longer well, process. Like, yeah. And side note, my my niece is like deathly allergic to tree nuts, so I've had to learn what nuts come from where. You know, it's it's you know like peanuts in the ground, obviously cashews, almonds, stuff like that. Yeah, nuts. Uh, I'm trees. you know there's so yeah. many. They, uh, there are airlines that have stopped serving peanuts. Because yeah. so many so many children who have peanut allergies and just the dust. Yeah. There there are in fact there are warning um depending on what it is that you're you're buying or what you're whatever um whatever ingredient you're buying, it'll say this this laboratory also processes nuts. Yeah, like a cake mix or something. Yeah, yeah cake mix. Processed in a facility that contains nuts, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, he's done, Bryce has done way. Oh, yeah. You know, when, oh, yeah. when you have a family member that, that can that can suffer from something that will kill it, kill him or her, yeah. you want to yeah. be prepped. You don't want to, oh, yeah. you know, because you don't, you don't want to be the cause of somebody's, you know, demise. Yeah. But by the same token, you know, um, uh, I I do a lot of uh, I I take a lot of supplements because I'm those folks who know me I'm I'm a gym rat 
So I'm heavy into supplements. And, you know, even the supplements will tell you, you know, there's no milk, there's no dextrose, there's no, you know, you, um, in fact, a big tequila guy that we know uh, has his own um, supplement company and is strictly supplements. He's not processing anything that's, you know, his labs don't process anything that's got milk, you know, the proteins all come in naturally. Um, uh, he's one of the agave idiots. If you guys are old guys, you know, old dogs who know who I'm talking about. And mm -hmm. he, he makes great supplements for, for fitness. Cause that's his, that's his business. Uh, so, you know, they gotta be real picky as to what labs they're using, where you're buying your ingredients, things like that. And, um, so yeah, this is all, I want to yeah. know where the coffee's coming from, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's just let's it's, just. This is this. Yeah, take a look at it. Find it. It's on their website, and so I know it's available online. Um, I haven't looked for it locally because I didn't know about it until recently. But I, I will. And if I don't find it locally, I will buy it online. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Worth every penny. It's beautiful. Yeah. Very well done. And and it's it's got as much character as the tequilas, you know. It's not it's not, it isn't just an extension of the line, which is what I love. No. It's not just like they're slapping a label on some coffee liqueur and go, yeah, we'll just no. we want to fill the shelf space. This this has structure and balance yeah, it's a, and depth. Yeah, it, it's a different animal. You can tell there's probably a whole different team behind this than there is creating any of their tequilas. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah, my it's, I want coffee that smells like this. Yeah. You know, this is yeah, really I'm gonna play really around. Funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with this. I'm gonna put some cocktails and I think my wife's gonna fall in love with it. Mm. You probably won't drink it straight. I, I like it straight. I, I would too. I would yeah. too. I wouldn't I wouldn't. Although I think when when I share this with Alex, he'll probably want to make an espresso martini. I want to mm. see what that comes across. Honestly, I'm not a cocktail guy, so I don't know. I don't know what, what an espresso martini is like, and I know there's so okay. many different versions of it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, you know, I could just pick and choose one. I mean, they're not even using tequila. I mean, they're using everything: mezcal, they're using sotol, all the different you know agave spirits. So, you know, somebody's espresso martini could be different than this guy's, you know, or yours. Oh, yeah. So yeah. All I know is I want to know where the coffee's coming from. What region? Where in Mexico? What kind is it? That's what I want to know. Uh and maybe I can I can send um uh Tromba an, an email and find out. I just for my own edification because yeah. You know, is it Colombian coffee? Is it, is it, I know you're starting with Arabica, but what's the region? Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, they're saying Mexican beans. So, well, yeah, but you know, that could but, come from anywhere in Mexico. It's a big country. Oh, well, right. Yeah. What, well, yeah. I don't know what region of, and I, like I said, we only had coffee, specific coffee from Chiapas. And anybody who's had coffee from Chiapas knows it's very, very earthy. I mean, it tastes like dirt. That's how earthy it, it is, and I'm okay with that. I'm I'm all right with that. I I'm all about the terroir, you know. That's why that's why Kona coffee is different. That's why Jamaican Blue Mountain is different. Nicaraguan coffee, I know exactly what that tastes like. I got several yeah. different regions. Uh, Trader Joe's have been really good about selling that kind of you know that kind of um, types of coffee. Ethiopian coffee will like grow hair on yeah. your face you know i mean yeah, yeah. It's, you it's, know are you are you as picky with your coffee as i am I'm, I'm not as picky but i i do appreciate it so um i was lucky enough to go to nicaragua on a on a kind of a mission trip we you know worked on a, a water well but uh but luckily like we got coffee from i was like wow this coffee is so great and then um a co-worker of mine he been to Ethiopia and like uh, he brought some back. And I was like, this is amazing. So it's not something I devote a lot of time and attention, but when I have access to it, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Wow. We need to start sending you coffee, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll start doing <laughs> coffee reviews. Well, you yeah. know what? I, like I yeah. said, for a tequila nut, really? 
The only thing yeah. he's passionate about that is tequila or is agave spirit is his coffee. Yeah. So it's about time you up your game, bro. I I, I didn't yeah. know you had a I didn't know you had a flaw, but now you do. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. what it is. I'm yeah. sending you every coffee liqueur we comes across to us because I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, that. you know, yeah. I this amazing brand of promise nominee. If you folks have had it, let us know what you're doing with it. Are you putting it in your coffee? Or are you drinking it straight? Are you serving it after dinner? Are you can you serve it with a can you pair it with a cigar? I think you could. Yeah. I, think I would rather yeah. pair it with. I think um, I think it's a great after dinner and after dessert. Yeah, like replace your port. You know, like kind of that after dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love this stuff. Amazing. Yeah, if you're making cocktails, share your recipe. If you're if you're willing, I'll make them. You know what? I wanna. I wanna. I want to now. I want an espresso martini, but I want it made with this. Have you got yeah. this on the bar? If you don't, I don't. I don't want it. Don't make it with a vodka. Make it with a tequila. Make it with something that's got this stuff in it. This ish in it. <laughs> so that's our take on Cafeto from Tromba. Please, if you got, if you folks are getting it, you're buying it. What are you doing with it? What are you pairing it mm -hmm. with? How are you serving it? Are you serving it to your friends? What are you doing with it? Tell us, tell us on the, you know, on the comments below, um, you know, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us here on YouTube, subscribe to our newsletter on the website, tequilaaficionado.com. Follow Bryce. Where can they find you, Bryce? Yeah, I mean, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Austin Tequila Connoisseurs. Sign up for whatever Bryce does, sign up for it. Just, just do it. Okay. And you know what? Whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs> <laughs>